Hi, I'm Bob Kovacs, and this is my 2008 Suzuki SX4. In this video, I will replace the rear brake caliper on the driver's side of the car. We were out driving the other day, and when we stopped, I noticed that the rear wheel on the driver's side was hotter than the other wheels of the car. I did some checking and discovered that it's the caliper that's bad, so I will replace the caliper. Now, when the caliper is bad like that, it means it's dragging on the brakes and that caused the extra heat, which means that the brake shoes, the brake pads have worn unevenly. So I'll be replacing the brake pads as well. However, that won't be part of this video. This video is just the caliper. I got my caliper from Rock Auto, which is a supplier on the West Coast that serves the whole country. And Rock Auto has a great price, but there's a high core charge. That means that the unit I take off the car, the bad caliper, I need to return them and they'll give me some of my money back. So the core charge is high on, uh, with Rock Auto, but the price of the part is really good. So I need to deal with that core charge. One other thing I need to deal with is when I remove the caliper, I'm opening the brake system on the car, the hydraulic system. That lets air into the system so that when I'm done replacing the caliper, I need to bleed the brakes. So I'm not going to show the brake bleeding as part of this project. I'm not going to show replacing the brake pads as part of this project. This is just replacing the caliper. So it's not super hard, but there are a number of steps. So let's get started. Right here, this is the brake caliper that we will be replacing. And it's attached, believe it or not, by only two bolts. One here and one here. So we take these two bolts off and then this lifts up out of the way. It'll take a little prying to get it out, so I'll be using a screwdriver. But this is the wheel caliper right here. The two bolts holding the caliper on are 12 millimeter, and you can use a 12 millimeter wrench or ratchet either, whichever works best for you. I think a wrench is just as easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening this. And this one as well. And now I can just thread them out with my fingers. With the bolts out of the way, now I need a screwdriver to pry this up. A little more prying, I think. Okay, there it's out of the way. With the caliper off, you can see the brake pads. They're pretty easy to remove. Just get a screwdriver in here and pry them out. Sometimes they're a lot stiffer than that. This inner one, okay, it's coming out too. Sometimes you really need to pry these guys. On the caliper, these two bolts hold the bracket for the parking brake cable in place. Once I take these two bolts off, I can move the bracket and I can unhook the parking brake cable. So the next step is to get those two bolts off. With the bracket loose, I can now unhook the cable. And there's only one remaining thing attaching the caliper, and that is the hose from the brake system. So I'm going to be removing that bolt. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. And I'm holding the caliper in place with pliers to give me some grip. That bolt is now loose. And again, this has brake fluid in it, which will probably drip. There we go. Everything is loose. The new caliper came with this mounting bracket. So I'm taking the old mounting bracket off. It's attached with two bolts in the back. They are two 14 millimeter bolts. They're not hard to get off, but they're hard to see on camera. I'll get the wrench on. Loosen those nuts and get them off. Got the first nut loosened, the first bolt loosened. And now the second one. Now the bracket, caliper mounting bracket is loose. There's these hardware bits on this bracket. The new caliper came with new mounting hardware like this. So I'm just gonna discard all of this. This is the new brick caliper. It's made by a company called Cardone. And again, I bought it from Rock Auto. 
This is the mounting bracket for it here, so I will be separating it with these two bolts and mounting this mounting bracket first and then putting the caliper in place. So the very first thing to do is to take these bolts off so that I can get the mounting bracket off. It was harder than I expected to get this 12 millimeter bolt off, so the inner nut here is a 19 millimeter, believe it or not. So get a 19 millimeter on there and then with some leverage you can get the outer bolt off. So the first step in mounting the new caliper is putting the bracket in place like that and it gets attached with the two 14 millimeter bolts that you took off of the old caliper. Once you have the caliper in place and the bolts are finger tightened, get your wrench on them and tighten them the rest of the way, making sure they're good and snug. The next step is to install the hydraulic hose, which goes into this threaded fitting right here. This part of the caliper needs to be up, so the hose goes in where the pipe from the hose comes down through this slot right here. Okay, it's threading in smoothly now. It took a little while to get started. I've got that finger tightened and the hose is down through that notch like I showed before. Snug the brake line fitting on. We'll check its tightening one more time once the caliper is fully installed, but just get it snugged up right now. So I'm ready to reattach the parking brake cable. The cable is mounted in its bracket and I've got the bolts loosely mounted here for the bracket. They're loosely attached. I'll tighten them down once I get the brake cable on. Now I'm going to take a pair of channel lock style pliers and I'm going to rotate this hook around so that I can reach the parking brake cable. With the parking brake cable hooked on, tighten up the bolts on the bracket. The brake pads come with a variety of metal shims and fittings. These are the ones we'll be installing at the moment, so I'll show you where these go. Notice the lip on the bottom of this, and there's also little extended pieces on the back side. The lip goes with the lip here on the caliper, and those extended pieces go right alongside the rotor. So just put it in place and press it in. And likewise, for the piece on the other side, it's got those extended pieces that go alongside the rotor and the lip that follows the lip of the caliper. The next step is to install the outer brake pad. So go ahead and slip it in place. Be sure the top of the pad is aligned just below the top edge of the rotor. Now this is the outside pad. I've got to do the inner pad as well. And here goes the inner pad. Again, you have to make sure the top of the pad ends up just below the top edge of the rotor. The final step to getting the caliper ready for mounting is to put this shim in place. It just goes in this hole on top of the caliper. And now it's time to get the caliper on. Just slip it over the pads. The final step in attaching the caliper is to get the two bolts in on the back side of the caliper that hold it in place. Get the bolts good and tight. Should be on there good and firm now and now's the time to go over all of the other bolts to make sure everything else is really tight. And that's what it takes to change the rear brake caliper on a 2008 Suzuki SX4. Now there's something I didn't show you. I didn't show you how to bleed the brakes. You will need to bleed the brakes since you had the hydraulic system open. I'll have brake bleeding in another video. But for the moment, the caliper installation is done. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.